Hello, dear friends. Welcome to another study of the Spiritus magazine. It's always a blessing and an honor to be with you here on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today we're going to talk about constructive elements of the mind. There's an article published on issue 47 of the Spiritist magazine. As a reminder, we always remind you of the blessings that we have of having the Spiritist magazine. And if you're with me, I absolutely appreciate you being here with me. And before I go straight to the article, it's a very short, blessed article by the spirit Euripides Bassanova through the medium Corina Novellina. First time in English at the Spiritist Magazine and a study at Kardec Radio. So here for us Nourish Your Souls. I always like to remind you guys that you can visit spiritistmagazine.org. And when you visit the website, what you're going to find is here on the upper right corner <clears throat> a link to download the app for the Spiritist Magazine on your app to, uh, un, iPhone device or Apple device or in your Google Play store. You also would have the link to the Spiritist Magazine Facebook page. Of course, this is 100% volunteer work. Your donation helps us continue the works of the Spiritist Magazine. But here you find a wealth of resources. As you can see, this is the newest issue of the Spiritist Magazine, all about the pandemic, both issue 51 and 50. And if you wish to download the PDF version of the magazine, you can just browse through the different issues and download it. Today, we're going to talk about issue 47, which is dedicated to women and spiritism and many others in your app you'll be able to do the same you're going to choose the article you want to wait for it to download and you can open it and once you open and once you open the that issue i'm just making sure i can choose the right tab once you download the app the issue you're gonna this is what you're gonna see you're gonna see the pdf version you can download it to your computer you can make it smaller you can make it larger and you're gonna scroll down all the way to the article which is this one this is the constructive elements of the mind and it's a short article as you can see here and i'm gonna post all of these will be I'm going to project it to you so you can read it with me. Isn't that a blessing, dear friend? It's very unlike anything else you're going to find. Nourishing, nourishment for your soul. Work inspired by the higher spirits, the spirit mentors of the Spiritus Magazine, the spirit mentors of Kardec Radio as well. And here for you, and then we will be happy to guide you if you need any of those instructions as well i always like to remind you that you have those resources for your use anytime you want download it in your phone download it in your in your tablet have it with you when you're waiting in line at the grocery store when you are waiting for something to happen when you're scrolling down on your couch at night, read the Spiritist magazine. This article is a beautiful one. It's going to invite us to reevaluate our relationship with pain. It's a beautiful way for us to think about what pain, even though painful and difficult to go through, can be used by you and I as an opportunity for us to learn and grow within our life. This physical life, this one existence, and then the spiritual acquisitions that you have and this physical existence can be taken with you all the way to the real life in the spirit world. And we have here the blessed mediumship of Corina Novellina, 
and the kind words of a rapid sparse novel to help us. And I will now read the message with you and we'll make comments as we go. Always a greeting. Brothers and sisters, may the master's blessing fall upon your hearts. And he's like, oh my God, my heart, your heart, let us feel these blessings falling into our lives. Isn't that beautiful? Very coherent language with a language of a superior spirit. In the medium's book by Alan Kardec, there will be a session there that will tell you how to identify the nature of the spirits. Even on question 100 of the spirits book, Kardec will give us the information on how we can identify the different types of spirits there around us, what kind of messages we receive, what kind of the way they speak. And one of the things you can notice in all of our studies that are of serious nature is that the, the language is rich in kindness and in love. So the blessing is brothers and sisters, may the master's blessing fall upon your hearts. Euripides will say, the development of the constructive elements of your mind is one of the most imperious necessities of your spirit. So inside our minds, you have these elements that they can be constructive. Your spirit's mind guides the actions of the cells of your physical brain and your then perispiritual body, physical brain, and then physical body. So we always have our spirit's minds, will, thoughts, and ideas get to transmit it to our perispirit and then the action in the physical body. How do I know that? That is coherent with this study, Evolution in Two Worlds, which you can watch here at Kardec Radio. All of the um, studies of those chapters, of 40 chapters, two parts, 40 chapters we did here a while back. Go to our playlist and find it. So here she's saying, Euripides is saying, developing this constructive element, elements is one of the necessities of your spirit. It's not a maybe you do it, it's you must do it. Well, how do we do it? Let's talk about the constructive elements. He will say the realization of opportunities of service. This is the immediate duty of the individuals who dream of the happiness of a better life, free from the storms of all kinds in which humanity, a condition of their inferiority. Here we have, how are we utilizing the opportunities of service that we have in our lives. How, first of all, we need to identify the opportunities of service in order to be able to utilize the opportunities of service. So when we go about our day, are we open, able, and willing to sit back and identify at every moment how you and I can serve, how you and I can be of help to one another, how you and I can use the power of our minds to connect with the good spirits. And then with that connection comes an idea of service. And Euripides is saying the realization of these opportunities is an immediate duty of all of us. Who doesn't dream of our happiness, of a better life, free from the storms we have here in humankind? And he's saying the storms of all kinds is a condition of our own inferiority. Who doesn't dream, dear friends, that one day there will be no hunger, there will be no homelessness, there will be no pandemics? A, a place where we dream about having medical knowledge, scientific knowledge, public health knowledge, aligned with sociology, economics, 
anthropology, mathematics, physics, all in alignment so that we can all be in alignment with the divine laws where we are respectful and honoring this physical existence. Where we respect that we are here to serve one another, that we accept this place. Who doesn't dream, right, about the time where we will be able to see one another in person? But guess what? This storm is a condition of our inferiority. And you and I have an action we can take today to make sure that sooner rather than later, we can use the powers of our reasoning, align with science and the spirituality to diminish the fact of the pandemic around us. As a scientist, I can tell you how you can do that. Masks, social distancing, small or no gatherings, time for introspection, listening to the science. If we all do our part, the storms of the earth in the future won't be here. There will be no need for a pandemic to waken us up in our spiritual life, right? So let's utilize all of the opportunities of service. There's no time to waste anymore. When we are asked to act to the benefit of all, giving up some of the personal liberties that we are so attached to, we are growing. This is an opportunity for us to serve one another. It's a, a lot of food for thought, and I am asking myself the same questions. All of the hosts here, are as um, growing in life and spiritual life as you are. So let's reflect of in the identification of our spiritual life, of the opportunities of service that God is putting on your life. Your opportunities of service are yours alone. I'm not living where you are. I don't have the physical border that you have. I don't have the challenges that you have. I have my own. And that's the place where I can serve. And the place you are on the earth today, dear friend, that's your, where your opportunity of service will be. So let's make sure as our immediate duty of someone who is dreaming of a better life, a better earth, then we need to attune to those opportunities of service. He will say the luminous reach of the work of the master along Kardec is the most powerful vehicle that will trigger the level of the spiritual progress of the earthly humanity. Hmm? That, that is a bold, that's a very comforting statement. We are here on the earthly humanity progressing together, servicing one another. And then this reach of Alain X work is the most power, powerful vehicle to trigger this development. When you and I got to learn of Kardec's work, if you weren't lucky enough to know of this in our childhood, I myself only learned about spiritism after I finished all my graduate studies. I was way beyond my prime years. This has given such a different meaning to our lives. Now, knowing that you're in mortal spirit, knowing that this is more, there's more to life than this physical life. Although blessed and welcome and privileged to have a physical body, there is more. So the physical difficulties, the monetary difficulties, the spiritual difficulties, the psychological difficulties, the financial difficulties are all vessels and are all ways for us to serve, for us to learn, for us to grow. And in those difficulties, we can identify the opportunities of service. And knowing of spiritism has allowed us to use this to trigger our development, our spiritual progress. And he, she, he's saying the earthly humanity, he didn't say of a humanity that only lives a specific place, a specific country, a specific continent. He said earthly humanity. The teachings of the spirits, as codified by Allan Kardec, is unique. Started by Allan Kardec in France, now spread to certain areas, now taking its breath of 
reach all over the world. Fruit are decorated, for example, in the English language. So we need to know how important it is. However, the teachings of spiritism can be found everywhere, right? Other spiritual masters are also teaching different parts of humanity about spiritual life, the spiritual values, the values of the soul. So we need to attune for that teaching. The teaching is universal. You're more than your physical existence. You're more than the brand name clothing. We are more than our cars and homes. This is just temporary things we use for our comfort and for our improvement as tools for our physical life. So there's more. We need to aim higher than that. He will say, if you could conceive of the miraculous power of pain, the healing of moral wounds, then you would have to be more careful in making the most of this great vehicle of spiritual recovery. We even have to take a deep breath because <clears throat> and a sip of water. Miraculous power of pain. Who wants to be in pain? I know nobody who wants to be in pain. I know a lot of people who are in pain. I work in a healthcare setting as a researcher. And I see a lot of people in pain. My own uh, nurses work with the COVID patients now and they're pain and they're in their eyes when they can't save that person is is pretty astounding. So we need to use this miraculous power of pain. Pain will heal our moral wounds. That doesn't mean you're gonna seek pain. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what he's saying here is, we would be more careful in making the most out of this great vehicle of recovery. So if you are experiencing pain, psychological pain, spiritual pain, physical pain, what is that pain teaching you? How can we make the most out of this ve great vehicle, this way of spiritual recovery? There is a reason why we go through painful situations. Physical pain, when something is actually hurting, from mental anguish and pain that sometimes will take someone to take their lives. There's true spiritual and psychological pain out there. However, if we knew how much that pain can heal our wounds, if we were able to spiritually, psychologically, mentally, and medically help one another, we would empower ourselves to make these make pain a part, of, a part of our spiritual recovery. You have a reincarnatory plan. I have a reincarnatory plan. In that plan, we may have areas of difficulties and that those difficulties can cause us pain. What am I doing during those difficulties? Am I resigning? Am I being rebellious? Am I using that opportunity in spite of pain to reach out to others? You see around the world many folks who go through incredible pains, things that you and I couldn't possibly imagine from trauma to loss of loved ones to loss of function, physical function, losing a part of their bodies, uh, traumatic experiences, war, famine, hunger. We can even imagine how many of them, lots of them use that painful situation and say it's enough. I will help someone else go through the same pain that I'm in there. So they've used that experience as a catalyst to their spiritual recovery and pain, and then they serve one another. They serve others in soothing the pain, yet the pain is has that power of healing our moral wounds, of the things we've done in our previous lives that now we are called into account we are asked to take accounts we took the credit card over there with making the mistakes the debts and now the collection agency is calling us and that may be manifested in pain in our lives what else does it say the human individual has shown eternal allergy to pain that is true nobody likes to be in pain and he continues this is understood to some extent in minds that have not been clarified in the true sense of life, 
But, so those who don't know of the spiritist doctrine or the spiritual life, that it's understandable that they are allergic to pain. However, he says, but in relation to the spiritist, that's you and I, such rebelliousness, such ignorance of the purest reasons constitute irreparable mistakes. So he's saying, no, no, no. Don't be rebellious when pain reaches you. Don't claim ignorance of the spiritual lives, the spiritual reasons for pain, because you've been blessed with the luminous reach of the works of Alain Kardec. If we are spiritists and rebel against pain, He's saying, so repeat this person of those words, constitute irreparable mistake. Now let's use what we are learning here with what we may have already learned somewhere else. Go to the books of Andrea Louise. One that comes to mind under inspiration of the good spirits is Workers of Life Eternal. So for example, in Workers of Life Eternal, in all of the books of Andrea Louise, we learn that the spirits kindly organize spiritual aid groups that come to help us during the night when we are physical bodies asleep or spiritual body can travel with our spirit to different places. We can receive healing. We can do psychological treatments. We can have surgeries in the spiritual realm. We can learn. We can go back to the spiritual realm tonight and pray that we're going to go take a class with Vilipid's person over so he can further explain these beautiful teachings to us. Yet he's saying here, if we read all of that in Workers of Life Eternal, Andrea Luis comes to help people who are discarnating. And each and every one of them, there are five of them, I believe, in this story, each one of them is in a different level of evolution, spiritual evolution, physical evolution. Each one had done something different. They weren't all the spiritists. They were different Christians. In there, some more prepared, some less prepared. Each and every one of them received the medication and the treatment they needed until they were able to detach from the physical body be taken uh, in the rescue aid with... Um, the spirits. So we saw there that each and every one of their opportunities, it's not easy to be uh, to, to be in pain. It's not easy to discarnate and get old and your physical body starts to break down. Certain things don't work anymore. Yet we should not have this allergy to pain because each and every situation in the book, um, Workers of Life Eternal, you're going to see there was a reason for that pain. There was a reason for the delay in the moratorium instead of dying a certain time, dying later to help some other folks. And there was a reason for uh, that person to be in the ICU or maybe those few hours in there as we see a suffering would be, allow them to come to realization of their mistakes, repent, ask for forgiveness. And then when they discarnate, they're in a better place in the so that's how we see pain. That's how we should see pain. Not allergy to pain, not seeking pain. Nobody's going to go out there seeking pain. But if pain reaches us in whatever shape, we say, okay, what am I supposed to be learning with this situation? Is it too much for me to bear? Do, what do we do? We go get help. Is it intrusive thoughts, Physical pain, go see a physician, through the first, go see a psychologist, maybe a psychiatrist. Is someone in immediate um, danger of hurt, hurting themselves or others? You call the 911 or the National Suicide Line. We can act upon the pain. We can support one another in the pain as well. What else does he say? He will say, let us seek the harmonious tuning of the practical work of the saving concepts of the work codified by the master Alan Kardec. So the saving concepts, the luminous reach of the teachings, the ability to tell people, trust in God. God, the creator, created you with a mission, with support to have your mentors. You have more than this life then we attune those teachings with practical work. Once you know of that, it's up to us to go and serve. 
put into action the words, walk the walk, walk the talk, go do stuff, go serve, find a way to serve someone today. And then there's a plead, he's pleading with us, let us correspond to the efforts of the one who exhausted himself in the laborious and relentless work of the coordination of the teachings of the spirits, aiming at only the luminous script of the humanity millennially mined by the process of physical and moral degradation. So how are we honoring the works of Kardec, the works of Euripides Barsanova, the works of Francisco Cândido Xavier, the works of Divaldo Franco. We are consuming all of this, we're reading all of this, we're posting beautiful messages, we do our work in the Spiritual Center, we pray, we do this live so we can connect. Yet, am I corresponding? Am I working as hard as I can? Kardec exhausted his physical health in order to bring to us the books of the codification. Can I spare more time within my day so that I can be of service, that I can spread the good news of the master? Attuning the concepts we learn about the mortality of the soul, God, the divine laws, the importance of reincarnation, the influence of the spirits in our lives, the work of mediumship. Can we align the teachings with our actions? You can start with the law of worship. We can pray. We can start with thinking, feeling, seeking, and molding the good in our lives. Even if we can't physically go and help people right now, we can act at a distance because we know thought is life. There's a mental particle to thought. And then we can together spread the good news and be attuned Correspond to the efforts of our long Kardec. Honor him, not just in words, but in deeds as well. Now, the, those are the tips that um, Euripides Barsanova will bring to us as we can do. Correct, while there is time, the sinus positions of the thoughts that build nothing. Thoughts that build nothing. Do we have thoughts that build nothing? So are we thinking about the next season in Netflix? Are we thinking about who's going to get a rose or get out of our island? Are we thinking about who's going to make the most nicest TikTok or Reels video out there? Those are thoughts that are not necessarily building anything. Or are we thinking about how am I going to structure my day tomorrow, the blessings of the hours I have? How many hours I'm going to dedicate to service, learning, the physical needs of the physical body and the house and the family? Are we thinking, how can I build something? He says, elevate words and deeds to the highest, seeking harmony and peace. So when we speak, we speak of the good. We don't criticize and judge. We definitely don't gossip. We definitely don't focus on the negative attributes of anybody because we're seeking harmony and peace. We're elevating our words to the highest degrees, to the highest vibratory planes. He says, put your own interests at the same level as your neighbors. The neighbor next door, your co-worker, the grocery store cashier, the bus driver, the teacher, the physician, the nurse, they have their interests and they should be all leveled up. We all have the same interest. We, if you look deep down, we all want to be safe. We all want to be loved. We all want to love our family members. We all want to have comfort in our lives. We all want the best for the ones we love. So put your interest, my interest, at the level of the neighbors. He will say, seek the completion of the lesson set forth in the Gospels. This is the sure path to redemption, along with the relative understanding of the... <clears throat> of the reasons of human pains and struggles. May Jesus help us. So dear friends, these are some tips and tricks by the spirit, Euripides Parsinovo, through the medium, Corina Novellina, that we were inspired to bring to you today as we are together in this journey of studying different articles of the Spiritist magazine. And as I... I'm going to invite you now 
for to join me on a prayer. I disappear. I am going to invite you to join me on a prayer together here. We always pray at the end. We read the message. We discuss. We make comments. There are as much as for me as they are for you. We are here to nourish our souls together. And at the end, we pray. If you have your water with you, have it next door to you. Close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so, so you can move inward, your attention inwardly for a few minutes. And then I'm going to invite you to also repeat the words of the prayer mentally, shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, thank you for the blessings that you have given us tonight. Thank you for this opportunity of being together. Thank you for all that you provide us with each and every day. Thank you, God, for the earthly elements that sustain our physical existence in the world. Thank you, God, for the elements that sustain our spiritual body. Thank you for giving us the experience of being incarnated today. We thank you for this blessed opportunity of service, of redemption, of learning. Dear God, we pray today that you help us to withstand any of the difficulties of our lives, that you allow us to connect with the good spirits. We pray that we are strong to go through any pain in our lives and we are strong to see our loved ones and acquaintances when they are in pain and that we are bold to reach out to them when we need help and that we are courageous to help them when we notice that they are in difficulties. Dear God, we ask you for the blessed opportunity of service wherever we are. We pray that the good spirits, they are guiding our reincarnation and inspiring us, that they can help us to be more compassionate and indulgent towards not only ourselves, but all of the beings that are put in our way today. May we be kinder and more compassionate May we be loving and caring for all that come our way. Dear God, we pray today that you may be with us wherever we go, that we can listen to your counsels through the good spirits, that we can wisely choose our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, and that those thoughts, words, and deeds can be a constructive force in alignment with your divine laws that we can be able to co-create with you in goodness today. Dear God, we ask you for your blessings and for your protection. And with your permission, we end our studies today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you so very much for being with me. I hope that you can join me again next week. We always broadcast at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays here at Kardec Radio, Facebook and YouTube, at the Spiritual Side of Richmond Facebook and YouTube, and later we'll post this also on Instagram. So wherever you are, May you feel the blessings of God. If you have any questions, you have any comments, please write to us. We would love to hear from you. And until next week, God blessings. God blessings and God willing, I'll be with you. I wish you 
a great week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.